I just want to take a few minutes and go down the history of what's been going on since I began getting sick. It was late November when I first started noticing symptoms. Uh, around Thanksgiving time I was getting short-winded, tired easily, and light-headed. I was also wheezing. Uh, at the suggestion of my wife, I started going to the doctor in December. I was originally seeing Katie Peters, uh, who was with Internal Medical. She is a PA. During that period of time, she ran me through a lot of tests. Uh, I did a sleep study here at home with a gizmo on my finger. Was uh, put on two liters of oxygen. Was during, uh, diagnosed with COPD during that time was given a stress test, a sonogram of the carotid arteries, a nuclear medicine test of my heart, things of that nature. Everything was apparently clear. By mid-January she was hinting to me that uh, might be some type of depression. I begged to go to a neurologist because I was continuing to get worse. Uh, I complained every time I saw her that my head was foggy, felt like I was stoned all the time. Uh, I didn't get a referral so I went myself. I saw Dr. Jeanette Lopez sometime in mid-January. At that time while she examined me I uh, told her that you know maybe some of what was going on was in my head. She told me absolutely not that there was evidence of everything every symptom that I have com had complained about. She offered to have me lay off work at that time she told me I should not be keeping the family finances and she showed me at that time that uh, I was hyper reflex on the left side of my body. I told her I would continue to work because at that point in time there was uh, DTE was allowing me to work from my desk uh, which she did. She signed off on a, on a deal to have me uh, no hazardous type work. She then lined me up for several tests, including MRIs and lab work. Uh, she told me that she would not see me again because she was moving, but she asked me to tell Dr. Sanner everything that I had told her. Uh, sometime after that, when I saw Dr. Sanner, he just uh, asked me to come back in six weeks, told me he suspected that it was uh, sleep apnea. Uh, I was a little bit discouraged, set up an appointment at the University of Nebraska Medical Center with Dr. Cotton. Uh, and in the meantime, I had referred myself to the Mayo Clinic where I was not accepted. Dr. Cotton said he thought I had problems that he could not help me with. He referred me also to the Mayo Clinic. Also denied. I went back to Dr. Sander after that with my wife, Sherry. And by that time, the... Uh, uh, what I call involuntary arm movements was beginning to show up. Uh, the doctors are calling it myoclonus. Uh, Dr. Sander at that time uh, made a referral for me to see a movement disorder specialist in Omaha at the University of Nebraska Medical Center on April 13th. The day today is April 6th. Um, after that, uh, things at work were becoming a little bit hostile uh, with upper management. Uh, that'll be a recording of its own at another time. But I took short-term disability a few weeks ago. Shortly after that, on a weekend on a Sunday, I had to admit to the emergency room due to severe myoclonus. It was not only in my left arm, but also in my left leg and in my right leg. I was unable to walk unassisted, uh, had to use a cane, also had help from my wife, Craig Mayhew from work, and his wife, Martha, uh, also accompanied us to the emergency room. There I was prescribed a drug, uh, given an IV, first of all, and then prescribed... Uh, Lorazepam to uh, 
keep the convulsions or the myoclonus down to a minimum. After that, the ER doctor told me to see Dr. Sanner immediately the following day or the day after. Dr. Sanner then uh, scheduled me for an EEG, an MRI of the brain again, another one, and a lumbar puncture. And at that time, he also prescribed a mantadine, which uh, is prescribed for people with Parkinson's, I believe, and he said it was an experiment to rule out Huntington's Korea. So up until yesterday, or up until today, I was taking these. I took these for two weeks, a mantadine. From then on, he told me to start taking Zonisima. Uh, Zonagran, which is uh, for epilepsy. Started that today. Anyway, during the lumbar puncture, which I had on March 30th, while I was on the table, the myoclonus stopped and my head cleared up. My head had not been clear since early in January, the first week. And uh, for the myoclonus was very, very minimal, but it started coming back a few days uh, after that, and again the head fog. Now the myoclonus has been there, it, I was calling it involuntary arm movements from the beginning. In the beginning it was so subtle that uh, it was not visible, I could only feel it. The first time my wife realized it was happening was when she was sitting next to me on the couch. The first time it was very severe, uh, uh, about one second at a time, continuous, was playing poker with Dan Heeb. And then again, uh, during a leadership meeting at work on a Wednesday morning, it got pretty severe. But it has never been as severe as it was that one Wednesday. Now, occasionally it will go into my left leg also, uh, but it has never been so severe that I would have not been able to walk unassisted. Uh, I can't understand what's going on. Uh, we're still pushing forward and hoping to find out. My visit will be with a movement disorder specialist a week from today on the 13th of April and uh, when I have any more updates uh, we will do so. These are the drugs that so far I have been prescribed. These are all different. Currently, I'm only taking the one, the one for epilepsy. But these are all things that I've been prescribed since the onset of this thing. <clears throat> Looking forward to an end. Thank you.